TikTok NYC. We're on day four of the festival. There are four more days to come, so we're right in the middle of the festival. Uh, as a New York City festival, um, we love to support local stories, but I have to say, never in our six-year history have we shown a film that's more local than this one, Class Divide. Uh, it's so uh, wonderful to see uh, so many neighbors uh, in the house uh, for this film. Um, you are the first audience in the world uh, to watch this film. This is the world premiere of Class Divide. Uh, our uh, uh, friends at HBO uh, shared it with me um, over the summer as we were putting together the festival. And uh, of all the films I looked at um, uh, this year, I knew the Class Divide was the one that we absolutely had to have at the festival. And, and for, I'd say, the last four or five months, I've been dreaming of this moment to be presenting this film to you on stage. Uh, now, it is my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, two of the key people behind this film, producer Daphne Pinkerson and the director, Mark Levin. Hi, um, thank you so much for coming. Um, this is really an amazing film to make. Um, I want to thank everybody who took the time to talk to us. And, um, you know, I've met so many new people in the neighborhood. I feel like now I'm living in a, a small village instead of a big urban state neighborhood, whatever. I mean, it's just um, been really, really um, a wonderful experience. And um, of course, I want to thank um, Jill and Evans at HBO and Nancy Abraham. <laughs> and our team at Blowback, Kara, John, Emma, John Carlo. Um, and all those people that I forgot. <laughs> no one told me I was going to be speaking now. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you, Daphne. Uh, we couldn't have made this film without you. You know that. And um, this is a rare treat to be able to walk to the theater for a premiere with all of our neighbors, uh, many of whom you'll see on the screen in a minute or two and who you'll meet afterwards in uh, a Q&A that we're going to have following this. So once again, I want to thank the festival, Tom, thank you so much, HBO, Sheila, Nancy, and everyone in this neighborhood who really opened up to us, as you'll see in a minute, and made this a very intimate and personal film. It is local, but local is also global. This film is about issues we're all struggling with, but the people are real, they're here, you'll meet them in a few minutes. And I once again thank you all and look forward to a lively, lively discussion afterwards. Thanks. So, Mark, uh, you know, the, the story that you tell in this could probably be told a different version about many New York City neighborhoods uh, at, um, facing those kinds of uh, class changes. Uh, talk to me about your own personal history with this neighborhood and, and why you picked this neighborhood to focus on. Well, I uh, hate to give away my, uh, my uh, antiquity but I've been in this neighborhood for 40 years. So uh, I entered it as, I guess, what you could call an urban pioneer. Uh, I moved forward to become, I guess, part of the gentrifying creative class. And uh, I'm now um, nervous, like many other people, about being displaced uh, because of the rising rent. So I've kind of seen the full cycle. In fact, my wife is here, and she knows uh, that when her mother first came to visit us on 26th Street, she started crying because this is where her daughter ended up. Uh, now, of course, down the street is a Hilton, and uh, lofts in my building, um, you know, earn the millions of dollars. So I've seen it. My kids went to Hudson Gill. In fact, uh, Whoopi Goldberg's mom was their first teacher. Um, so I've seen all sides of it, and Daphne and I uh, were lucky enough. We've done uh, two other films for HBO on the economy and how it's kind of impacted real people's lives, the schmata rags to riches to rags on the Garment Center, and uh, lost on, uh, hard times lost on Long Island, on the, uh, you know, uh, middle class and upper middle class, on long-term unemployed after the crash of 2008. So we were looking for kind of the completion of that, <coughs> had gone to Silicon Valley, San Francisco, had gone down to Florida where the housing crash happened. You know, as you say, this is happening all over our country and really all over the world. Um, and we were sitting on the High Line, looking through that frame, 
Uh, and the scene in the film where all these different languages, tourists, are coming and taking photos, and you're hearing Chinese and French and Spanish and Portuguese. And I turned to Daphne and I said, do they have any idea what they're looking at? You know, they're looking right at through that frame, and on one side is the avenues, World School, and the other side of the street is the projects. And um, it just kind of hit us. We've traveled all over the country looking. It's right here, right in our home. Daphne also is a, a longtime resident of Chelsea. Our studio is in 601. Uh, so uh, we went to Sheila and Nancy, and uh, I have to say, you know, we, we, we discussed the project, but it was really Sheila's uh, intuition uh, that said, maybe you want to look at this through the eyes of the kids on each side of the street. And that proved to be uh, a great inspiration, and that's kind of how it started. Unless you have a different story, Dan. <laughs> Uh, if I can bring the house lights up, I want to be able to see everyone's uh, faces. We'd love to take some questions from the audience, especially if you're from the neighborhood. Uh, raise your hand and I will call on you. Uh, start right here. So uh, the question was, it, it's mentioned at the end that the uh, president of, uh, of Avenues had resigned and if your project um, had any effect on the school policy. Um, all of that happened before the film came out. Um, so, I mean, there are um, people here from Avenues um, that you could talk to about it if you would like to afterwards. Um, it's called passing the buck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that um, there has been, uh, but I would suggest talking to, you've got people from Hudson Guild here, you've got people from the school. It's my sense from what I've heard that a dialogue that you saw some of the young people start, uh, Yasmin and her 115 Steps program um, has taken off and that the school and Hudson Guild are working together and I know there are people here that have much more details, uh, but yes. This, this kind of, uh, not intentionally, but it seems to have kind of uh, inspired a dialogue that the kids started on their own, now the institutions are following up. And I think there's even uh, some classwork that's being planned. Yep. Speak loud. Well, Rosa is here. Uh, where is she? Rosa, where are you? Yes, yes, right there. Well, Rosa, why don't you tell us what you think of the film? Um, I really liked it. It was very um, positive and a little, like, a lot of info about, like, Chelsea, I guess, like, about, like, the difference between the poor and the rich and stuff. Um, I would say I actually really liked it because it was like um, you could like not everyone is like not everyone can like fit in and like one like uh, what I'm trying to say is like not everyone could be the same as everyone else. So some kids like I, I saw some kids um, on the in the film and they were like some of the kids are brats and stuff and some of them are actually nice because I have like more than five friends that are from avenues that I play with a lot in the park and stuff. So I would say uh, I actually really liked it. And it was very, like, nice. Well, that, that is a tremendous relief. Live and direct. A, a review from Rosa. Uh, I, I think, look, I mean, what's I, uh, part of um, what was so special about the film is that, yes, we're dealing with issues that if you watch the debate just two nights ago or the one that's coming up next week, we hear a lot about income inequality. Uh, we hear a lot about affordable housing. We hear a lot about education, public education versus private. We hear a lot about immigration, all of these issues. And what we tried to do was because the your eyes and so many of the other young people, you're not burdened with all the kind of past that we are. You're seeing this fresh. So that allowed us to see this whole situation through fresh eyes. And really, um, Rosa, I have one question for you. Has anybody filled you in on who Billie Holiday is? <laughs> you asked me who my favorite singer was. I said Billie Holiday, and you said, you know, if you ever meet him. 
Uh, and yeah, I, there are a lot of people here that were in the film that we thank. Look, this took a lot of trust on both sides of the street. You know, for you, your family, Joel, Brandon, Hashim, Juwan, and on the other side of the street, you know, Yasmin and everybody else. You know, I, I, I know there's some of the kids from Avenues here, uh, Isabella, uh, Dan, um, Nick. Uh, so we thank you, I mean, because it took trust. Should we have them stand up? The sure. The, 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 the young people the that young are people in the film. Stand up. I know what I what I was left with. You know, uh, Rosa, and you were part of this, and so was your family. Is that whatever we know, there are inexorable forces, and yet we know we also can affect change. People that are right here, and that whatever happens the best will come when you have both sides of the street talking to each other. These kids intuited that, knew that. Just leave all the rest of it behind. You need to talk to each other. And that is so much of the problem that we see on the larger institutional and political level, the inability of two sides to really sit down and get to know each other and talk to each other. So I, I, I hope we can follow the lead of these kids. I know that's a lot of politics since you're going to be a geologist or now it's a doctor. I want to be a neurosurgeon because I like, I, um, a lot of my family has like migraines and stuff and I, like, <laughs> I want to find like a cure for migraines, but technically I just like dealing with the brain and I think it's something really delicate that you have to like take care of and I want to be a <laughs> uh, So first of all, I, I want to ask you, uh, so this is the first audience to see the film. It's going to be on HBO. Is there a date for HBO's broadcast? February, uh, in February, beginning of February, it'll be on HBO. Okay, so Rosa, here most of the people know your neighborhood. In February, it'll go on HBO and lots of new people are going to discover Chelsea. What would you want to tell people who've never been to Chelsea before what Chelsea is like? Like before, like before or after? Well, with the, as you experience it. Like I've seen a lot of tourists and like like uh, people like that come to travel here and stuff like and like they come like to here just to like you know experience New York because New York is like a really nice place. Anyway, um, I would like I I'll see them in the train and they'll like probably be from Europe or a different country and they'll be like in their little like in the map or stuff looking and then me personally I'll be with one of my family members and then maybe I'll tell them I usually um, this is actually true I usually tell them. You should go to the west. Um, you should go to the High Line, and I'll tell them like where to go. And then usually, um, this is the craziest thing. Uh, I told this lady to go, <laughs> to go there, and then um, I saw her going there. And then like this is like like I told her to go there, and then she went there. Like it was like two days later, and I saw her literally on the High Line, and then I was walking too because that's like my little shortcut to school sometimes. And then so I was like, oh my god, I remember you. I told you to go here. She was like, this is a really nice. And I was like, I know. And then I told her a little bit more about the info. And personally, I will tell you, um, Chelsea is not like a bad, bad neighborhood. You know, like there's worse in like Brooklyn, Bronx. There's, <laughs> <laughs> there's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a good neighborhood. Maybe there's one or two things about it, but it's not, it's not like the neighborhood that like makes it do that. It's maybe like the people or something, but. I personally think I will tell you, yeah, you should. It's it's Chelsea, I mean, which is like they have like everything. You like you're living in Manhattan. Like it's really hard to live in Manhattan when it comes to like houses and stuff. It's really hard. But if you are planning to come here and you live in like Queens or something, I will tell you, yes, this is a really good neighborhood and you should come here because you have like everything there. You have McDonald's and everything. <laughs>